In the name of God, hello everybody. This is session 12 of your morphology lesson. And I, in this uh, session, I want to talk about the uh, other, uh, I mean, uh, uh, phenomena in chapter 4, which uh, uh, are related to the uh, uh, derivation of processes and the formation of uh, words and lexical. Uh, so I think this is the uh, last session of your morphology lesson. Uh, as you know, in the previous uh, session, I talked about the some derivational processes like compounding, zero derivation, affixation, clipping, acronym, back formation, folk etymology, and some other processes which produce new words in languages. Um, uh, so you can read the examples and. Uh, again, I mean, uh, hear uh, the voices. So in this session, I want to talk about the other <coughs> processes which are related to derivation. Uh, the first one is the derivation and structure. Uh, having considered the issue of lexical storage of derived forms, let's go back to the notion of derivation and structure. We can schematize derivation as follows. Look at this input some there are some input and then output for example lexeme x uh, becomes lexeme y if we can have lexeme x as an input we consider it as an input and lexeme y as an output then it should also be possible to take lexeme y as an input to second function you see again input output Again, le lexeme y is a kind of input, then lexeme x is a kind of output. You see, we can continue this process again, again, and again. This is precisely what we do when you form words like, for example, unfriendly. Look at this example. Uh, uh, function 1, add ly. So friend becomes a friendly. This is input, and this is the output. And function to add on to, I mean, we, so we can friendly as an input, then on friendly as an, uh, uh, I mean, output. This is input, again, this is output. So we can continue again and again and again this process that will produce new words uh, in derivational processes. So we can even go on to form unfriendliness, for example, from unfriendly via function that adds ness. In each case, the output of one derivation serves as the input to the next. To determine the order of functions leading to a form, it helps to consider other words that contain the same parts. Consider, for example, the example unfriendly. On attaches to nouns only in exceptional cases, for example, on cola. Uh, however, it regularly attaches to adjectives. So we know that in English, on just attaches to adjectives. We use this fact in determining that the formation, uh, I mean the function uh, add ly, which forms adjective, must come before the function add on. So uh, a friend is a kind of noun. We should, I mean, first add ly to produce a kind of adjective then on as a negative prefix add to the adjective unfriendly so this is the first part ly and on is the second part so according to the category category of the word we can determine the processes of the adding of the affixes like this one unfriendly so for example, let's go back to the compound we came across earlier, high voltage electricity grid system supervisor. You remember this, I mean, uh, compound? We have, uh, so we can say that this compound clearly has an internal structure. High voltage, for example, is a compound, uh, as are electricity grid and system supervisor. Then we can produce high voltage electricity grid. Uh, grid, then we can uh, produce high voltage electricity grid system supervisor. You see here, step by step, we can add words to produce a, I mean, complex compound. We have taken English words, made compounds of them, and then used those compounds words to yield further compounds words. The output of the first compounding function serves as the input to the second and third compounding 
functions as you see in this example as I told you. The same occurs with any kind of affix. And this gives uh, uh, derivational morphology a great deal of power. We can think of derivation as always being binary in a sense. We take a form and apply a function to it. We then take the output of that function and perform another function on it. We can keep on going, getting bigger and bigger things simply by adding one thing at a time. The fact that the speakers of many languages can add phonological material to either end of a word sometimes leads to complex structures. Take for example a two example words in this example. You see here reinterpretation and post structuralist. These words have the following structure. You see reinterpretation. This is the stem. Of the word interpret is a kind of verb we can add re to it then produce a reinterpret then we can add asian and produce a noun reinterpretation again post a structuralist a structure is a kind of noun we can add al to produce an adjective then po uh, then ist to produce a structuralist and then post to produce post a structuralist as you see in this example this example tell us that uh, tells us that the interpretation, reinterpretation, this example, is the act of reinterpreting from reinterpret, not re, the act of interpreting. We start out with a verb, as I told you, interpret, uh, form a new verb via the prefix re, and finally, in, I mean reinterpret, and finally form a noun by adding the suffix asian, reinterpretation. In the case of post-structuralist, we start out with the noun structure. You see here, structure. Make an adjective via the adjective suffix al, structural. Create a new adjective by adding ist, structuralist. And a further one by adding the prefix post, post-structuralist. Can in turn be made into a noun by zero derivation. So, look at the tree diagram of this. The bracketing structure are convenient in part because they are so compact but the structure of morphologically complex word is made most clear when we use tree diagram like the following you see here we add re to interpret reinterpret we have a verb then asian reinterpretation you see this this diagram clearly shows that re and the verb re, i mean interpret form a unit a verb which attaches to the noun forming suffix asian in order to draw a tree diagram, it is first necessary to break a word down into its components and to fully understand how they fit together. So this is the tree diagram. This is an exercise. Draw a tree diagram of the following words for answer. You can look page 127. Lone mower, biodefenses, and insightful. If I ask you about the tree diagram of these words, you can draw it, uh, the tree diagram, and you can show me the, I mean, the processes of adding of these words to each other and producing a complex word here, according to the tree diagram. So the following uh, argument demonstrates that even identical strings may have distinct structures. Consider the structure of two words, for example, pseudo naturalistic and super naturalistic compare these two i mean words together look at the tree diagram as you see here uh, both of them are kind of adjective pseudo naturalistic and super naturalistic we can add natural as an adjective to istic naturalistic to produce a car another adjective then we can add pseudo then another adjective pseudo naturalistic but in supernaturalistic first we add super to natural to produce a supernatural then istic supernaturalistic you see in both cases we start out with the adjective natural as you see which we purposely have not broken down into nat nature and al although we could have in uh, 27a as you see we first make a new adjective naturalistic which we then modify with a prefix pseudo yielding a word with a meaning falsely naturalistic 
But in 27b, however, we take the adjective natural and add the prefix super uh, to it, giving supernatural pertaining to an existence outside the natural world. It is uh, to this form that we add the suffix istic, and then English morphology is such that we could form a different supernaturalistic, this time with the same structure as pseudo naturalistic. In 27a, this supernaturalistic would mean really naturalistic. So this is the difference of the meaning of these two kind of compounding, uh, combining. Um, so combining prefixation and suffixation leads uh, to other potentially ambiguous forms in English. Maybe this, uh, I mean, uh, combi uh, combining produce a kind of uh, ambiguous forms. Uh, three famous examples are here, unrest, unpacked, and unzip. The ambiguity of the forms in 28 in this example is due to the fact that the prefix on has at least two distinct roles in English, depending on what it attached to. When prefix to a verb, on is also called reversative with the basic meaning undo the action of the verb. For example, here uh, unpack a suitcase, you return the suitcase to the state it was in before the packing action took place. This is on plus the verb, so its meaning is undo or reversative. You see here, when we add it to the verb. If you untie a package, you return it to the state it was in uh, prior to being tied. When attached to adjective, uh, including a uh, participle adjective like, for example, wounded, stressed, on means not. For example, if a soldier leaves the uh, battlefield unwounded, it is not the case that he was first wounded and then unwounded because it is impossible to unwound a person. The soldier is qu in, in uh, question is not wounded. So if we add it to the verb, it means reversative. If we add it to the adjective, it means not. Okay? You remember this, I mean, uh, this process. If we add on to the verb, it means undo or reverse. If we add to the adjective, it means not, like unwounded, means not wounded. So this is the difference of uh, on. So it's a kind of ambiguous, it produces kind of ambiguous forms. Its meaning, uh, I mean, is based on the uh, category of the word. If it's a kind of verb, it means uh, undo or reverse. And if it's a kind of adjective, it means not. So you can, uh, I mean, uh, look at the examples in the book again. Uh, other analysis of example like unzipped. So we have some ambiguous forms like unzipped uh, in 28C. It depends on our interpretation of its prefix on. One possibility is that its structure is as follows, 29. You see here. Unzipped. You see here. First of all, we uh, consider zip as a kind of verb. Then on added to it, we produce unzipped. It means the reverse of the zipping. Then we can add ed to it. Uh, uh, it's a kind of past form of the verb zipped. This is one possibility. So one possibility is this. Here the prefix of the reversative on. As you see, yields the meaning caused to be zipped no longer. The suffix ed is then added to create the past tense or the past participle. The second possibility is that unzipped has the structure in this one, in this example. It means it's first we produce zipped as an adjective, then we add on to it. This form has the meaning not zipped because we add it to the adjective. As you remember, I, uh, I mean, uh, talked about it. Or in the case of, a, for example, a computer file having never been stored on a zip uh, disk, for example. Uh, the crucial semantic distinction between 29 and 30 is that only 29 requires that 
uh, zipping action had taken place at some past point. Structurally, 29 and 30 differs in the ordering of the affixation processes. Morphological structure depends not only on the elements you use, but on the order in which the elements have been applied. So these examples show that these, I mean examples, show that the ordering of the adding of the element uh, also uh, is important in the meaning of the word. So uh, there are some, I mean, some other words uh, you, and examples you can look at it in, uh, for example, English languages. Uh, Bloomfield provides us with more complicated examples of this sort from the language Tagalog. Uh, Tagalog is like English in that you can add things to the front and to the end of a word or a step, but unlike in English, you can also put things in the middle. Okay. Uh, unlike English, for example, language. This is the example you see here. For example, tawa meaning is laugh, a laugh. Ta tawa, you see here, one who will laugh, and tuma tawa, one who is laughing. This is uh, we add here a kind of prefix reduplication. Ta tawa. Then here we add infix in u m inside between t and a. Tuma tawa, you see here. So uh, as Bloomfield shows up. Tagolo also has forms like those in uh, 32, which involve the same operation, reduplication and infixation, uh, but in the opposite order. For example, pilit, it means effort. Pu, milit, we put a kind of infix here, one who is compelled. And pu, pu, milit, we have here reduplication, one who makes an extreme effort. You see, this is, a, as you see, uh, beside the, I mean, the infixation and the uh, uh, reduplication, the order of adding this, I mean, element is important in the meaning of the word. So you see here in uh, 30, I mean, to see that in this example, a uh, reduplicated syllable, I mean, pu, includes the vowel of the infix um. This tells that in this construction, infixation precede reduplication. If reduplication had perceived in fixation, we would have expected the non-occurring form, for example, the uh, non-occurring form, like uh, the other, I mean, we can, uh, for example, pumi pilit. This is ungrammatical in this example. The next set of examples raises a still another issue. You see again, putul, Again, pong putul. We have a prefix here. Then pamu mutul. Again, this uh, example. I want to uh, put this. I mean, example here to uh, show you that beside the, I mean, the uh, affixes and the some other processes, the ordering of adding this element is important in uh, the meaning of the. Word. You see here, we begin with putul in uh, the example. If we add the prefix pong to it, the final nasal ng, uh, I mean, with the following stop, yields me, as you see in the previous example. Again, you see it. Pong putul, we produce pom. Okay, it produces a kind of me sound. So, uh, we then reduplicate the first syllable of the internal stem. So we have, again, you see to example, pa uh, mu mu. You see here because it uh, it becomes m. So we when we reduplicate this, uh, I mean this part. So we have pa mu mu. You see here, this is the correct word here. But if we reverse the processes of the reduplication and infixation, we have a kind of ungrammatical word. So these processes in this Tagalo language show us by Bloomfield, show us that the order of the, I mean, uh, the processes is important. Uh, I mean, beside those processes, I mean, infixation and reduplication, the order of adding of these words and these elements is important in languages so we should consider 
these processes and the order of them. So uh, we can say that uh, speakers can reach inside morphologically complex forms and pull out an internal piece. In the morphological literat uh, literature, this goes by the unfortunate name of head operation. This is operation which we use in uh, I mean morphology because such an operation generally involves the head or a stem of a word. For example, consider the following English example. We have flower child. So when we uh, want to pluralize this, I mean, uh, uh, co combination, we produce flower children, not flowers child. Or frog man, we say frog men. You see, the fact that the plural of flower child is flower children instead of flower childs means that the speakers apply the pluralization operation to the head of the compound. It means child here, which has an unproductive, irregular plural ending instead of to a compound as a whole. Similarly, to pluralize frog man, you pluralize its head, leading to frog men. Head operations are possible because word level morphology is a two way street where creation of word forms is a, as much a part of the human language faculty as is their analysis. So, again, we can cite evidence for this from child language acquisition. Clark uses the examples below to illustrate that at an early age children are a able to analyze the complex word forms that they hear. You see the, these examples uh, from Clark which hear from the children. Uh, for example, you know why this is a high chair because it is high. The children know the head of the complex word is a a which word or uh, you know what you do on run ways, you run on them because they start with run. You see here, these are the examples from children and these examples again show that the children can uh, determine and can, uh, I mean, uh, uh, um, determine the uh, stem of the complex word uh, so they can determine the head of the compound. Uh, like the adult and these examples show uh, this kind of phenomena so uh, as you see in this chapter uh, we in this I mean session I talked about the relationship between derivation and the structure the input the output and some processes which are related to it the um, adding of some prefixes like on to the words and the uh, determining the head of the operation and some other phenomena so we can say that uh, in summary that uh, derivation forms complex lexemes as you see in this chapter which may or may not be stored in the speaker's mental lexicon because some words are nonce form we produce at one time in our life and we uh, uh, and we, uh, we do not uh, store them in our memory. These complex lexemes, unlike simple uh, signs, like for example dot, have internal morphological structure. They may also serve as the basis of further derivation, leading to yet more complex lexemes. Derived lexemes that are not perfectly compositional must be retained in the mental lexicon, as a result, the lexicon does not consistent, um, uh, consist uh, solely of simple signs. Many of its members may be partially motivated, complex words. This is a summary of the chapter. As, uh, yes, as you see, uh, I talk about some complex derivational processes and we uh, talk about many examples about the compounding, zero derivation, clipping, affixation, acronym and some other processes and derivational process which produce a new word. Then we talk about the internal uh, structure of these complex words, the input and the output and the order of the adding of these elements. As I told you, beside those uh, I mean elements which we add to the word, the order of the adding of these elements is also important in the meaning of the uh, words. And you see here, and the last one is the 
determining the head of the I mean the uh, processor uh, so um, uh, we finish the uh, morphology lesson and uh, you can read all the materials from the first chapter to the end of this chapter uh, and you can hear the voices uh, you can read more examples from your books you read the material again from your books and if uh, you have any question you can ask me so uh, um, we have final example based on this material which i explained to you and uh, i think that's enough for morphology good luck and thank you everybody for your attention and goodbye